Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So as you probably guessed from the title today, I'm gonna to talk you through setting up a hip thrust and getting the bench at the right height. I've just warmed up, I'm actually about to start my workout and I'm starting with hip thrusts, so thought it would be a good one to talk you through. So, before we get going, as I say, the bench height is really essential. Um, and sometimes if you have it too high, you might not feel it in your glutes. Um, so your feet position can affect that as well. And they normally say to have um, your shins parallel with the wall in front of you and your knees at a 90 degree angle. But that's not always the case. As a quad dominant person, my feet are a little bit better, slightly further forward. So rather than being like this, they're a little bit better like this. Um, so that's my knees here, where my nails are, and this is my feet, so ever so slightly. But have a little play around with your feet um, before you begin, and similar with the bench height, before you even start doing any weights. So just for example, say, um, this is the bench that we have in here. We also do have a thruster, if you would prefer to use one, then only obviously the right height. Um, however, if you only have access to a bench, as you can see, this one is just far too high. Like, so I'm on like an angle rather than my body being, it's Wesley, rather than being at a 90 degree angle. This is far too high for me. So, like I say, we have a thruster, but for really heavy hip thrusts, I much prefer to use the bench on an uh, incline, uh, decline, sorry. So I'll show you how I do that. So you literally just drop it down. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull this out of the society. I've got a bit more space, so. I bring this round so you can see, and then it's on the decline like that, Wesley model in there. Hi babes. So yeah, having the bench like that is so much more beneficial to get the right height. So I'll show you on there, body weight. So again, just trying out body weight. Go for some warm up as well. So you want your feet about hip with the partner to do a wide stance, whatever stance is best for you. And then coming up. So as you can see here, I'm now on a much better angle, gates forward, and it also just helps support your neck a little bit better like this. I actually much prefer hip thrusting like this. Doing it this way has changed the game. Going instead of going um against like a normal bench head, what I used to back in the day. So if you're doing it with dumbbells, totally fine a dumbbell, sorry, totally fine to have that at the side of you and roll it on your hips. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate with a barbell. Um, I know that for a lot of my clients, doing it with the Olympic barbell seems really daunting, but it is the easiest way to get weight on. But as I say, do whatever feels most comfortable for you. Um, you can either have the dumbbell next to you and then sort of flip it on, uh, similar with a kettlebell, or get somebody to help you in the gym. I promise you, if you just ask somebody for help, it'd be more than willing to like you know it seems really scary but even if you just ask a member of staff like they should be willing to to help you just get the weight on and off i used to when i first used to do it with the the set barbells i used to like stand up put it onto my hips and then like lower myself down which you can do and you could do that with a dumbbell as well and um, so i'll go and grab a dumbbell and show you for demonstration purposes um i'll show you just make sure i've got a Good angle, there. Right, I'll grab a dumbbell and show you. So this is the 17.5. So you can either do this one or two ways. You can either hold it on your hips already, lower yourself down, get your feet in position, shimmy round, and then off we go. Or, if you want to do it off the floor, so you can pop it down next to you, like there, just like the way I've got it off. Flip it around up onto your hips. Again, shimmy your feet in the position. Use your hands. Shimmy up so your back's in the right place on the bench. Make sure that your feet are in the right position. And then off you go. So, chin, so tuck, gaze forward, and drive in. Oh, she wants. So I'll show you how to set up the barbell as well, if that's something that you feel like you'd want a bit more guidance on, uh, to feel a bit more confident with. So I personally prefer to start with it on the rack and lift it off, but you can do it from the floor. Um, so you just want to get the plates that you need and then put them on either side. So 
So I'm just going to start with the weight that I'll be using today. Put those plates on each side and then add the clip. Make sure that the right end so they're nice and safe and secure. We do have music on in this gym, by the way. Obviously, I just can't have it on for copyright purposes in case they can train with no music. So, yeah, each side, make sure that you've got the right weight on, which requires mathematical skills sometimes. So, like I say, obviously, if this is too heavy, I'd prefer to do it this way because I know I can lift it off. Um, so, you can do it from the floor. And I can do a video on that, so that would be. Um, helpful, please let us know in the comments below. And then we obviously also need a hip thrust pad. I would recommend buying one of these, they're so cheap. If you're, you can never find one in the gym, or your gym doesn't have one, or you want to do it a bit rubbish. I, I used to take this when I used to go to, like, to a commercial gym. I used to take it with us in my gym bag, and I didn't have to waste time searching around for one, and I had it ready. So, I'm going to lift this off. If you do do it that way, make sure you lift it in a correct way. Lift properly, like I go to deadlift it down, as I've just demonstrated there. So, I'm going to just bring this around here so you can see a bit better. So this way is a bit easier to roll it on. And um, if you feel like you kind of can go really heavy now, but you can't get that weight on in the dumbbell. And um, so as I say, get you on in position against the bench, roll it over your feet to your hips, you're going to shimmy your feet in. Now when you do a practice warm-up set, kind of see if there's a point on the floor where you know where your feet were, where you felt it in your glutes um, and the right muscles that you want to be working. Don't worry if not, again you can just have a little shimmy around with your feet, so you're going to have to shimmy again up on the bench like you did the dumbbell. So lifting up, shimmy up to your shoulders, are in the right place and then thrust it up. Okay? So just like that and then you can roll it off. I've just a few reps there just for demonstration's sake. But that is probably one of the easiest ways. Like I say before, I kind of really knew much about the gym and hip thrusting. I used to use like the, the set clad barbells, which are a lot harder because just like what I did with the dumbbell, you have to kind of hold it. And I was doing like 45, which was really hard. Um, like 45 kg, sorry, so it was really hard to like get it on and off because you can't roll it because the plates are on each side, like you can see them in the background. There, those ones. Uh, it was really hard to do that because, like I say, the plates on each side wouldn't roll over your legs. If you've got someone that you train with or someone to help you and you feel more comfortable doing it that way, please do. I mean, it's not the wrong way, it's just this can make it a little bit easier, but I totally appreciate how daunting it can be to go over where the Olympic barbell and plates are. But that's why I wanted to create this video to help you to hopefully instill a bit of confidence in you to go and give it a go. Like I say, if you feel really nervous about it, ask somebody for help who works there. They should be more than willing to help you. You could get a PT even just for a couple of sessions and ask them like to show you how to set up different exercises. Because I think then once you've done them once, just for like a couple of sessions, if you feel like it's maybe it's not a cost that you can always afford. Um, you know, like I've got clients that just want to, that feel nervous starting the gym, they've never been to a gym before. So they come and we'll go through basic things like this, how to set up different machines, different exercises, um, and just help to build up your confidence a little bit. It doesn't have to be a long-term thing. If that's all you feel like you want it for, then you can make sure your form's correct, like all that sort of stuff. If not PT, even an online coach, um, someone who can just kind of be there as a bit of support and if not that if that's totally like not a possibility for you try and get a friend family member somebody you can go with just to help you and um, even if you know someone like in your friendship circle or your family that's like quite experienced at the gym just to go along with you or even if they're not just to go and support each other because then at least if something goes wrong you can laugh together about it like that is one of those things in the gym where like things go wrong I still do stupid things all the time like if I go to a new gym now and try to use a new piece of not even a new piece of machinery sometimes I just can't get like the seat thing to move and I'm like standing there yanking it out it happened only a few months back at a different gym I was at couldn't like 
do it. Like stuff happens in here all the time, like in front of mine and Ashley's clients. Like you just gotta laugh it off. Like it's normal and we've all been there. We've all been a beginner at some point. So just keep that in mind. Like I genuinely think nobody's interested in anybody else but themselves in the gym. Yet everybody worries about what everyone else is thinking. Like if you think you're worrying about you, and what others think of you, they'll probably be thinking the same thing. They'll not be thinking about you, if that makes sense. <laughs> so just something to keep in mind. But as I say, there's a few little tips there just to try and build your confidence. But hopefully this video has been helpful to show you how to set up. And then always, just I'm actually going to do my work in sets now, but just as always, remember to uh, de-rack the weights put them away where you found them in the right place um, and you know that's just good gym etiquette that is something that drives me mad uh, we aren't really like an open gym like that so don't really have that to contend with as of yet um, you can see I've left the plates out there but I will put them back when I put everything back but yeah something important as well just remember I do rack your waist put everything back where it was ready for the next person because you might be able to so say they're like the 70 that barbell 70 kilograms like somebody might come in after you and not be strong and not be able to lift those plates off and think oh, I'm just not going to do it and then that makes them give up so just always being mindful of other people it's just um common courtesy and polite and just good for the gym staff as well so keeps it nice and tidy for everyone but yeah hopefully these tips have been helpful if there's anything else that you would like us to go into in a bit more detail um actually I was going to show you just talk through some form tips for your hip thrust. Sorry. So as I mentioned, obviously I mentioned your feet position. I have also mentioned tucking the chin in, keeping your gaze forwards. And then you also want to think about driving through your heels as well. Um, as I say, as a quad dominant person, I do feel hip thrust in my quads a little bit, but I do feel them a lot more in my glutes when I play around with my foot stands. Sometimes lighter is a bit better for me. So not, I kind of like go quite heavy on a hip thrust. But when I go too heavy, I just my quads just take over. And um, if you're fortunate enough to be glute dominant, that might not be an issue for you. But find what works for you. Like everyone's different, different genetics, um, lots of different stuff going on for each individual. So as I say, have a little play around with your foot stance. Make sure you're feeling it in the right muscles. Getting that mind muscle connection um, and form correct is much better than just hoying loads of weight up and not working the right muscles if that makes sense slowly build it up each week progressively overload and then you will get to that weight with the right form and the right work and the right muscles and that my muscle connection is so so important as I say like I could probably hit this about 150 was my last PB but I could feel it in my glutes but I could feel it in my quads a bit more whereas I find if I go a little bit lighter I'm still working um in a rep range that's like challenging but feeling it in my glutes a hell of a lot more which is what I want to work when I'm doing the hip thrusts so yeah just a few little form cues there as I mentioned on the way through and hopefully that set up help give that a try with the bench as I say like we've got like a thruster which is the perfect height you kind of want it at the bottom of your shoulder blades um, you want the bench or the thruster around here at the bottom of your shoulder blades but the decline bench for me it just feels a lot more sturdier when I'm going that bit heavier so yes hopefully you found this helpful please like and subscribe if you haven't already sorry Rosie's back because Ashley's here at work <laughs> perfect diamond and I'll see you on the next one